Hi and welcome to this video on transformations and we're going to look at an introduction to enlargements. Now we enlarge things all the time in our life like so take photos for example. We're always taking a photo with a device it would take it in a certain size ratio and then we want to blow it up for a big photo or maybe even shrink it and we call those enlargements. So I always like to start with this question. I think it's a great question and I'd, once I've explained it, I'd like you to pause the video and just have a little think. So how much bigger is the orange square than the purple square? It seems obvious, but normally I get three different answers for this one. So pause and press play when you're ready. Okay, so hopefully you may have come up with twice as big, so I'm just going to write times two. You may have come up with times three and you may have came up with times four. Now I understand the first two, times three often comes up, I, uh, that is, you're not really thinking for that one. I'll explain where it comes from in a minute, but times four is the obvious one, because four of these fit inside. So you could easily argue that this is four times bigger, and you would be right. Two times bigger is also right if you compare the sides. You can see this side is one square, this side is twice, so you could say the sides are twice, and this one would be the area, wouldn't it? Three, it just means you need three more of them to make this, so that's a bit naff. All right. But the answer is times two and times four. But what we're actually only looking for when we talk about enlargements is the length scale factor. Okay, so we normally just drop the length and just call it what is the scale factor, and that means what are we multiplying the length of the sides by. So this one we would say it's enlarged by a scale factor 2, twice as big. So that's just saying again, we use the word scale factor when we're describing an enlargement and you'll often see me write SF because I'm a bit lazy really, I can't be bothered to write scale factor. So if it's twice as big what we're looking for is we're going to multiply all the lengths by 2 we should call it a length scale factor really. When you get a bit older, get more advanced, you will start doing area and volume scale factors and then we do go back to calling it a length scale factor. We should just always do it, but we don't. Um, so here's another example. This is a scale factor 3 this time. So you'll notice this was 2 and this is 6. This is 3. This is now 9 squares. And once I've got those two, I can just join those up. So I'm not going to worry too much about those. We are going to talk about the diagonal lines in some of the examples as we go through. Okay, so, well, here's one now. We're going to enlarge this one by scale factor 2. So it's dead easy when you've got questions like these with, you know, easy two square journey. And so that's going to be 4. Okay, so I'll just pop the numbers on there. That's 2, that's 4. This one, that's 2, that's 4. Oh, that's 6, sorry, it's so a scale factor 3. This is 3 and this is 9. All right, so that's really easy when it's horizontal and vertical. But when we have angled lines, we've got to be a little bit smarter. So I'm going to take this point here. I could have chose any of them, I just chose that one. And I'm going to go on a journey to this one. But I'm not going to count diagonally, I'm going to cross, count across and down. So I can see this is 2 and this is 2. So if I enlarge it by a scale factor 2, instead of going 2, 2, I'm now going to go 4, 4. So if I pick any random point, like say here, I can do this, I can draw anywhere on my page I like. So I'm going to go 4 across, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 4 down. So I've kind of mapped that journey. So this journey is now twice as big, but the direction is the same. Let's go from my starting one down to this one now. I'm going 2 left and 3 down. So I'm now going 4 left and 6 down. Other way you can think about it is because it's a scale factor 2, you just do that journey twice. So you could go 2, 3, so 2, 3, and then another 2, 3. I actually mix and match what I do. I seem to change between them. And then you just join them up. And there we have it. It's a scale factor 2, twice as big. So sometimes you may be asked to describe the enlargement or find the scale factor. And this time we're going from 
what is the enlargement of B from A? So shape B is an enlargement of shape A by scale factor. So that's 2, that is 4, this is 3, let's just check, 6. Now it's important to point out, I haven't got any examples to explain this really well, but if this is a scale factor 2 and this is a scale factor 3, it's now not a similar shape. When you enlarge something, it's going to be a similar shape, just a bigger version. Think of a photo, for example. Unless you enlarge it in the length and the width by the same ratio, it's not the same photo anymore. Your heads will be stretched or squashed or you know whatever it is you're taking a photo of. So it's important that in both dimensions, or all dimensions really, or all sides, they all follow the same ratio. So let's have a look at this next one. So we've got a 1 there and a 3 there. You know, I'm not going to compare this top side to this bottom side because there's different part of the shapes, but this one is a 2 and this one is a 6. So it's looking to me like a scale factor 3. These are all 1s, so that's all the same. I'm happy with all of those. And that's a 2 and that's a 6 as well. So this is a scale factor 3 and this one, I didn't write it down, it was a scale factor 2. It's pretty easy just counts in squares. But sometimes we want to make things smaller. I didn't mean to show you that. So first I want this one first. So if we ask, this, go back to the same example at the start, but go the other way. So what is the scale factor of going from the orange to the purple? Okay. So now you could say it's a quarter of the size. That would again be the area. Today's lesson is all about length scale factors. So if this is a 2, this is a 1, what have we done? We've halved it. We call that a scale factor, a half. And we still call this an enlargement, weirdly, even though it's getting smaller. We just don't really have a good word for something that gets smaller. In America, they call it a dilation, but the dilation gets bigger and smaller. Like our eyes, they dilate, they go bigger and smaller. Um, so we just call it enlargement. And if we want it to go smaller, like when we multiply and we want things to go smaller, we use a number less than one. So I'll just go back to the slide, I just glanced over, I must have put them in some weird order. So yeah, so scale factor half means all the lengths are being halved in size. That's basically it. So it actually reduces the size, but we still call it an enlargement. So let's do these. So here we have a six and we have a 4. We need to enlarge it by a scale factor 2. So I'm going to take this point and I'm just going to put that there. So now it's going 3, so it's going to here. From that point it's going down, so I'm going down 2. I'm halving it and you can see we can join it up like so. So that's a scale factor of half. Now this one's way trickier because it's a third and there's no horizontal or vertical lines. So let's start with this point and go to this journey. This is 3, 3. So I'm going to start down here. Instead of going 3 and then 3, I'm going a third of that journey. So I'm just going 1, 1. And from here, I'm going 1, 2, 3 down. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So I'm going 3 down, 6 right. Well, a third of that would be 1 down and 2. Right, and there we have it. So just join those up as well. So it's an enlargement, it's just oh, it's a smaller version and it's really important to just look at the shape. Is it Does it look the same? If this line was over here and this triangle is now like so, you'll know you've done something wrong. So always triple check, but just count in squares, so count them properly. Now, last example we're going to look at is sometimes it's not a unitary fraction. It can be like, say, two-thirds, three-fifths. I'm, I'm pretty sure you can find two-thirds of something, so this isn't difficult for you. So this is six, this is three, this is six. I'm not going to worry too much about this one because if I do these three, I can just join them up. So I'm going to start here comparing this point. So two-thirds of six, well, one-third is two, so two-thirds is going to be four, so one, two, three, four. So it's still going to be smaller, but not too much. We're going 4 down as well from there. 1 third of 3 is 1, so 2 thirds is 2. And there we have it. So all we have to do now 
is just join these up. Okay, so that's the end of the video. Hopefully it all makes sense. Best of luck and in the next video we're going to look at using center of enlargements and that's when it gets a little bit trickier.